Tribe, welcome back to another video. So today's video, it's all about getting uncomfortable, and taking that leap, let's get into it. So before we get too far into the video, I just wanna to touch on, yes, I am sunburnt, like a motherfucker. So if I'm a little red, that's why. Yesterday it was beautiful out, took a walk, took the girls swimming, got burnt up, cause I'm white as hell, and wear a beanie all the time. So don't mind me if I'm a little red, dude. <laughs> But anyways, I'm out here in Marin, the same exact spot I shot my first YouTube video, first video ever. Came out here, did some hill running. It's called Do Something Hard Every Day. Shot that video like a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. Came out here, had to do this shit twice because I had to do it once to actually do it. And then uh, I had to do it again to film it because I was by myself. But that shit was a bitch. I'm just gonna hike today. When I get up there, I'm gonna give you guys some background on me about when I got uncomfortable and where it all started. But uh, before that, I just wanna to touch on this whole YouTube thing cause uh, that was a leap in itself. So let's get into it. So with the whole YouTube thing, I was scared as hell, scared of judgment, scared of opinions, scared of failure, scared of embarrassing myself. And uh, the more I started doing it, putting all my insecurities out there and just owning the shit, the more free I became. Like I just don't give a fuck anymore. Like, what do I have to be embarrassed about, dude? I'm putting my whole life on the fucking internet for you guys to see, for you guys to fucking judge, for you guys to have your own opinions on. So, you know, what else do I got to worry about? So I'm actually going to walk back down before I give you guys my story. Because it's windy as fuck up here and it's interfering with the mic. So I'm gonna go down to one of these little abandoned houses and uh, give you guys my story there. So here we are down at the abandoned house. Hopefully it don't echo too bad. I'm trying to sit halfway in, halfway out. Cover from the wind and the echo a little bit. Hopefully it sounds good, but it is what it is. But anyways, my story started about five and a half years ago when I was forced to get uncomfortable. Me and my kids' mom, we were going through a separation. I was 240 pounds, overweight, depressed. Addicted to pain pills, Norco's, Percocet, whatever it was. Working a dead-end job, thinking I had some type of work ethic. But really, I was just delusional as fuck. Because now that I do have work ethic, I realize I had none. Crazy the level of awareness you gain when you start putting in self-work. So instead of arguing over the place, who's leaving, who's doing this, I figured it was just easier for me to leave. Rather than disrupt the kids more than they were being disrupted. But uh, all that took time, you know, and for a while I was still watching them there while she was at work or staying in a motel, putting in applications for rooms to rent because all my family had just recently moved to Nevada. So I was out here by myself. You know, that was my home. That was all I knew. You know, I had really no friends, nobody to really, really take me in. And me being the type of person I am, I wouldn't have went that route anyways, you know, too stubborn too stubborn to ask for help unless it's my twin brother, you know? Hit that fool up like all the time, like, hey, what's good? <laughs> what you got on my 40, Craig? But, uh, so anyways, I felt it was just easier for me to leave. And I got a call back from these two dudes I didn't know, straight strangers, said uh, they were interested in having me if I'd accept. And I was like, all right, cool, you know? There's a thousand bucks a month for the room and, uh. I was taking home maybe 1200 bucks a month after taxes. So I couldn't even afford the place, but I just jumped on it anyways. Had no clue what I was gonna do, how I was gonna afford it, but uh, I was like, I gotta go. So I took that leap of faith. And when I showed up to the house to move in, I showed up with a laundry basket full of clothes, two baskets and an air mattress. I didn't fuck with nobody. I didn't go downstairs. I didn't use their fridge. I went to work, came home, went upstairs, went to bed and kept to myself. And uh, next thing you know, I was at my dead end job, I ran into my boy Chris, and I was like, hey, what's up with the job, dude? You put in a word for me? And he's like, all right, for sure, I got you. And uh, from there, man, I got the interview, quit my dead end job, got hired up with them, started working, saving money, getting outside my comfort zone, doing every little thing I could, going to kickboxing class, going to jujitsu, doing these tournaments, scared shitless but just doing it anyways, pushing myself, becoming better, trying to grow, reading more books. 
and uh, eating healthy, just doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I finally made the choice to get off pills and I just started getting uncomfortable every chance I could get. Cause I realized every time I got uncomfortable, my life got better. I'll give you guys another example. When I first met Nick at Affinity, he was running the business from his garage. I didn't know the dude, hit him up on Facebook Messenger, showed up to his house scared shitless. You know, I remember meeting this dude for the first time and I just wanted to leave. You know, I was like so uncomfortable. We started off with some little foot drills. And I remember thinking to myself, man, this ain't for me. You know, I gotta go. And everything inside me wanted to tell him, hey, I'm just gonna bounce. But I ended up sticking it out, made it through the hour. By the time I got to my car, I felt so accomplished, way more confident, and it was the best thing I ever did. And since then, Nick's business has flourished. He owns a full-time business, affinitykickboxingstudios.com, in Rona Park. Hit him up, check him out. Great people, great vibes. It's had a great impact on my life, my kids' life, and it's just overall a great thing. So from there, I just kept grinding, kept pushing. I was still watching my kids at their mom's house when she was at work. And it just wasn't really ideal, you know? It was kind of awkward. You know, we're separated and I'm still there all the time. So I knew eventually I had to get my own place. So I just kept going, saving up money. And eventually I did get my own place. And now I have a spot to have my kids. I got my own place. I got a second job. I bought a new car. Started this YouTube channel. Lost over 100 pounds. Learned about fitness, nutrition, macros, and I'm still learning. And I'm nowhere close to where I want to be, but uh, I'm just going to keep grinding, keep growing, keep getting uncomfortable. And I just wanted to share this with you guys so you can realize what happens and how fast your life can change when you decide to get uncomfortable and put in some work. So take that leap and get uncomfortable and watch how fast your life changes. And I just want to take this time to thank everybody that's helped me along the way. Nick at Affinity, my boy. Chris, my boy Dub, my boy Daniel, my brother, Christina, my mom, my uncle, all my family in Nevada, my dad. It's anybody that's helped me along the way. Even my kid's mom, you know, she's been supportive in ways she didn't have to and ways she didn't need to be. So I appreciate that. We actually became better friends through it all. So uh, it's all good, you know, just keep grinding, get uncomfortable. I thank you guys for watching the video. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Figured I would eat lunch before I leave. I tried to stand up, but my ass hurts like a motherfucker. I'm sitting on this concrete, being out here for an hour. So I figured I'd sit a little longer. <laughs> you know, it makes sense, right?